It was a summer afternoon in my hometown, Larnaca, driving with a friend of mine, and we passed from a salt lake. This salt lake is right next to the airport. And my friend suddenly says, Oh, ew, what happened here? Why did the salt lake shore turn red? So I answered, Oh, don't worry, honey. It's because of the eggs of Artemia salina, a little brine shrimp that lives here, and and she goes crazy. Oh, come on, give me a break. I don't want to know all these scientific details of yours. I'm just thinking out loud. So I quit. <laughs> but when I went home, I wanted to check how powerful this image can be. So I've sent her this picture saying, Hi, Boo Boo. This is Artemia Salina. She lives in Larnaca Salt Lake. <laughs> she replied, Gross. I continued. She can even fertilize her eggs without a male. This is a woman's world. <laughs> she liked that comment, thumbs up. But I can't share her reply here. So this happened four or five years ago. Last year, when the same phenomenon occurred, someone shared a picture saying that this is happening because of pollution from the airport. And guess what? My friend, although she seemed very not into science, she commented, no, get your facts straight. It's because of Artemia Salina. She said and explained. So yes, today, if we see something, strange or not, we just raise our phones, take a picture, and upload it, just like that. OK, we might write something irrelevant as well, like red is the new blue, or just shocking. But the sad part is that we do not process the signals we receive and share. Most of the times, we are not questioning them or analyzing them. You see, I'm a biomedical engineer, and as most engineers and scientists of the 21st century, I deal with signal processing. So what is signal processing? What do we mean by signal and how we define processing? By signal, according to IEEE, we mean a sequence of information. It can be an image, a video, or acoustic data. It can be a brain signal, or geophysical data, or genomic sequence. The list goes on. As for processing, it includes operations like filtering, transmitting, detecting, discovering, or reproducing signals by using different algorithms and techniques. Signal processing is the reason we have smartphones, smart TVs, space exploration, advanced medical devices, and many, many more. In our everyday life now, we are both receivers and transmitters of signals. And one of the most commonly used signals are images. Images from everyday life. Images from space, the moon, the Pluto. Images from scans, from our pets, from our pets as they grow old from strange visitors. I'll be back to that visitor. Infinite and, and countless images. This is our routine now. We stop the time. We capture the moment. And then we spend time using applications, adding filters, and try to design how we want to remember that moment. But is it so important to remember your lunch? Well, if you process it a bit, then you realize that thousands of scientists have been working in order for you to know and understand your food choices. You now know why you need protein or carbs or gluten-free bread, for example. Your decision is influenced by science. So yes, the moment you chose the jacket of, over fries, it's a remarkable moment. Wouldn't it be fascinating if we could associate every image with science? If we could add some extra processing to our signals to detect and discover science behind them, not as computers, but as humans trying to feed their curiosity. What's stopping us from that? Nothing. There's a whole world behind every little object that is scientifically derived, waiting for us to explore it and understand it. FaceTime science. Give science the attention it deserves, increase, sci increase scientific literacy, and eventually appreciate the moment and the living. You can do it. Start questioning your signals. It's fun, 
and it's consequential too. Science not only shapes our daily lives, but it is also the foundation of an innovative culture. Understanding it is crucial for all of us so we can be informed and influence our future. It's not hard. This is exactly what my friend did, but subconsciously. With a little bit of my help, I presented her the signal and she performed her processing. This is what you can do when you see Pluto, for example. You can ask yourself, what is that big heart splashed across half the Dwarf planet's surface? Science has the answer for you. Aha! Uh -huh. His heart is made of cold. It's formed primarily by huge glaciers and made mostly of nitrogen ice. The information is out there. You can access it in seconds. And if it's not there, it will be soon. Scientists are trying to make everything accessible and understandable by everyone. Our knowledge for the universe is continuously expanding, and so does the digital universe. From now until 2020, the digital universe will about double every two years and reach up to 40 trillion gigabytes in size. <laughs> wow, no wonder with so many images in social media. <laughs> so, in a world that is changing as rapidly as ours, developing the ability to learn new things is equally as critical to how well we're thinking or how much knowledge we have. Exercise and feed your curiosity. Develop your ability to filter the information, to combine the information, search for facts and evidence. This is what happened when I had a strange visitor. I found this spectacular moth laying on my wall, wearing its Prada outfit. And the first thing I did was, of course, to grab my phone and take a picture. But then I wondered how it ended up in my place, and so I began processing. I uploaded the picture and searched for a similar one. I found a better one. And of course, I learned its name, Utetheisa pulcella. <laughs> I felt lucky because this species occurs mostly in the Mediterranean and South Africa. Then I wondered about the strange colors and shapes on its wings, and I came across Turing's theory about pattern formation, mathematical equations that explain why zebras have stripes and cheetahs have totem stripes, and that could possibly explain why our fingers and toes are patterned like that. I saved this moment forever. And I ask you, when these beautiful wings taught me so much, how can I say, oh, stupid moth, the next time I see it? Meet science and appreciate the world surrounding us. We are trying to improve nature, to improve our experiences, to improve our environment. But first, we should try to understand it and connect. Shape your opinion on global warming on modern medicine, shape your opinion on tomorrow's transportation, on tomorrow's technology. Share your aha moment with a kid. One aha moment per week will stimulate their curiosity and maybe make them see the world differently. Guide them towards critical thinking and prepare them to solve problems we don't yet have. Great new ideas will then arise. You know, every moment has a story. Every image has a story. But also, every image captures science inside. And before you rush to say that you don't care or you don't understand, like my friend did at first, think of that. We are trying to improve the... the sorry. We are trying to improve the beauty... Uh, we are trying to enhance the beauty of our... Of our, of our moments by trying to enhance the brightness of our images. But the beauty of our moments is enhanced the more you know, the more you understand the greatness and fascination of science behind everything. The beauty of sunset is enhanced the more you know about it, the more you know about light propagation, about atmosphere. And unfortunately, the beauty of, of our sunset is diminished. The more we ignore science, the more we ignore air pollution, the more we ignore climate change. And if our sunset gets destroyed, then no filters and no applications will be able to restore its beauty. I invite you 
to a much deeper understanding of science and the world surrounding us. We are now equipped with the technology and we have the opportunity to do that. Signal processing is what connects the world and puts it in our pockets. From our pockets, our processing of the signals will connect us back to the world and help us process our future. Thank you.